tonight and just say thank you, Father, thank you, Father for giving us so much. For giving us so you much. are such a God of abundance and grace. And we receive it tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, you may be seated at this time. We're going to. Okay. You want to do the class? Okay. <laughs> she did good tonight. She had a little problem and she stayed with it. She says, No, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Am I good, Amy? Okay. Glory to God. Okay, where did it go? Yeah, okay. Well, I got double the stuff going tonight. <laughs> You've heard of double mint gum. Double your, double good, double good, double mint gum. <laughs> Double your pleasure, double your fun. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about double good gum tonight, but I'm going to talk about some other candy. When I was a kid, they had this candy. I think they still have it out if you go to Cracker Barrel. It's uh, Good and Plenty. How many of you ever heard of Good and Plenty? Well, years ago, they had a, a song that was out. Good and Plenty, Good and Plenty, Good and Plenty, Plenty Good. Plenty Good. Do you remember that? You, I know you do. Nobody in here knows that. Well, you know, they always have, because this is the wrong group. <laughs> they always have, you know, little jingles. I guess that would be little jingles. You remember it, Ruth? <laughs> Lord, didn't they have good and plenty in, o in Oklahoma? <laughs> well, they have it at Cracker Barrel. So if you go to Cracker Barrel, you'll see it. Anyhow, they had this, and they were white, and they were pink candies, coated. And inside was licorice. And so, <coughs> so, no, I don't think water is going to work. It's one of those things when you sing, everything opens up and everything slides down. You know what I mean? <coughs> well, tonight I want to talk to you about that God is good. And God is plenty. Hallelujah. He's plenty good. Turn to Psalms 107, verse 1. Hallelujah. The psalmist here is telling us that God is good. He says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. He says, Give thanks to the Lord, and tells us why. Because He's good. And His love endures forever. Why can we say He is good? Verse 2 says, because he has redeemed us from the hand of our enemy. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's good. Like Pastor, I think he said something about it this morning, that we come into to the things of God and took the Bible literal. I believe the Bible's literal. If you don't take the Bible literal, you won't get much out of it. And so we came into that, and we just believed that he said to do something, we just do it. We just did it. We didn't have what I call any better sense. No mind of our own in the matter. They just, just do what it says to do. So he tells us to give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. So we learned about the goodness of God. One thing that we did was we started with the goodness of God. We had some CDs. No, they weren't CDs. They were cassette tapes that my grandmother had given us. And it was, um, what was his name? Pat Robertson. Pat Robertson. And it was one of the t it was a series, but one of the tapes in the seri series was trusting the goodness of God. So here we are, babies, in the things of God. We didn't know, you know, much at all. I knew the stories in the Bible, the you know, all different parables because I went to Sunday school as a kid. So I knew how Jesus walked on the water and you know, and walked by the Sea of Galilee. I knew all those stories. I knew them. I read them. But it wasn't until we got into the Word and we realized that he was real, it wasn't just a story, that they really happened. And so we would listen to these tapes, and it was trusting the goodness of God. And uh, over and over and over, every night we had the tape player going, and we would listen, listen to that. So we built within our heart the ability to trust him in things as we stepped out on the water to believe him. So, but the psalmist is saying the same thing. He says, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, 
for he is good. His love endures forever. Because he has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. I had some. Did you ever have any? Amen. One translation, I think it's the NIV, says this. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Let the redeemed of the Lord, we say it, and the King James says, say so. And so we go so. But it, it says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their stories. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Amen. Tell their story. In verses 3 through 7, it says, Those he gathered from the lands, from the east and west, from the north and the south, some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where he could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distresses. He led them by the straight way to a city where they could settle. Now, at first reading of that, we know this was the children of Israel, that this is what they went through. But in a sense, I know when we came to the Lord, and I'm sure many of you also, you were, found yourself in that condition, wandering around. What is, is this all there is? Is this what life's about? Is this it? I don't know about you, but it didn't seem like a whole lot to me. You know, it didn't matter how well we did. There were, you know, our income and the, the way we would live would go up and down because he was in business for himself. And so it had ebbs and flows. You know, when it was flowing, it was, it, financially it was good and things were good. But is that it? There was never a sense of joy. There was never a sense of fulfillment, even though we had these things that were coming to us. And then those things would leave sometimes too. When winter came, they always left, you know. But we, find that we found ourselves in a desert, wasteland place. And we didn't have any, no place to go. We were hungry. We were thirsty. And that didn't mean literally hungry and thirsty, although it could be. We were that in, when we were in Tulsa. But it was spiritually. We were hungry and thirsty. Hungry for truth. Hungry for something to, to uh, be there when we didn't have anything. And we didn't have that. Now, we had each other, and you can get so much for that. We had our children. We had our family. And thank God for all of that. Many people that find themselves in this condition don't have that. They don't even have that support. So this is what he's telling them. He says, they cried unto the Lord. Now, we don't cry, per se. I see that as saying, Lord, because the Bible tells us to come to him and, you know, prove him on his word or tell him, repeat his word back to him. Lord, I'm in trouble. I need some help. You said in your word that if I come to you, I come boldly to the throne of grace. Now, I don't know about you, but bold means bold. It doesn't mean that I'm an old sinner. I've made mistakes. You were no sinner, and you did make mistakes, but now you can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive help Amen. in that time Amen. of need. Amen? And to get that built into our lives. And so they were saying, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and you know what he did? It says he delivered them. Amen. There was not maybe, if it's your will. There was none of that at all. He delivered them. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes we can get a little lapse in some of the things that we've learned and know. How many of you can agree to that? Get a little lapse in it. And so we don't push back. We don't push as hard. We don't step into the ring and say, you said what, devil? I'm not going to have what? You're not going to do this? You're not going to do that? We step, we step in there and get in his face. He doesn't like you to get in his face. And they get in his face and, and laugh that, like that sound. <laughs> You know, I don't know what happens. We can get kind of laid back in it, and we just don't do that. And symptoms come on, on a body. Now, I'm talking about the ones that have been with us for a while. You know, Sheila right now is dealing with some things, and she's having a little bit of trouble. And, and you know, and we pray, and I, I believe in prayer, but I can remember the day she'd push back. And she's pushing back, but she's not. When we pushed back then, we didn't stay home. You did not stay home because you had a problem. You did not stay home because you couldn't talk. You didn't stay home because you had a temperature. You didn't stay home. You say, well, you don't want to expose other people. Well, then get healed and you won't. We did not stay home. There was no excused absences. 
And we, we got up and we did it. And I had to just, Charlie, she was up there and she's got a sty in her eye. And I prayed for her, but it was bothering her. And I said, you want to get down? No, she don't want to get down. She committed to sing tonight, so she was going to stay up there and sing. That's what I'm talking about. She pushed through it, tears running down her face. Okay, devil, I'm going to stay up here and I'm going to do it. Amen? <laughs> and that's what she did. Because what we know is we know that when we call out to God, when we make our voice known out to God, he's going to tell us what to do. He's going to say, speak to that thing. I was talking to my brother and my, and my mother. She, you know, she had that uh, uh, four-stage breast cancer. And I remember her going, and she used to tell us. It was like, you know, that was like, that was a big thing. You know, like, what do you have? What's the devil said? She says, I'm not dying of cancer. Right from the beginning, she says, I'm not dying of cancer. She said, oh, I'm going to die someday, but it ain't going to be from cancer. And she said it over and over and over and over. Now, my brother, he was just coming into something, because it's been about five years or so ago. He was just coming into these things, and it made no sense to him at all. He's still working with it, because where he goes to church, they're not as strong on that as we are. But I think Jesus was pretty strong on it. Amen. That's what he told the devil. You know, he said, you know, that when he starts tempting him and telling him to be hungry and all that, no, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God's mouth, that's what I'm going to do. That's what he said. You know, we've got to get back to the basics. We've got to get back and do this. And not just in a few areas, but every area. If you've overcome some, build that back up again. I'm telling you to do exactly what I'm doing. Amen. Amen. You know, I may not be 33 anymore, but in the spirit world, because I didn't know as much now in, in the word at 33 as I do now. So, come on, body, we're still going. <laughs> you may not be 33, but you got the juice. You always have it. It's not going to be gone. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I got more energy now. Just get up and walk. You know? <laughs> Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. I have a watch that tells me, time to stand. Yes, it does. Every, whatever it takes a notion. I'm in the plane and it's telling me, stand up. And I'm going, I'm not standing up. <laughs> I don't go to the bathroom. I don't go anywhere on the plane. <laughs> I sit in my chair like this. <laughs> now, I say it. That I'm actually kidding. I'm very comfortable flying now compared to what it was years ago. But I'm not getting in no plane. Mm -mm. What has God done for us? How has his goodness been shown to us? We were wanderers. Maybe you were wandering. Maybe you're still wandering tonight. And wandering and wandering. And maybe you're still in that condition in some areas of your life. Maybe you see no hope in an area. Maybe you see that, that things are just not the way you would like them. Like they did call out to God, do we have to call out to God? And maybe, I used to be very, very visual with it when it said to stand on the word. This is not bad. I used to stand on the word. Literal. It did something for me. It gave me a picture. When it said to cast your cares, I'd write them down on paper and I'd throw them. So that they were gone from me. We need to get back and be just as strong in that. How many of you, and I won't show of hands, how many of you can say that when you came in, you're not nearly as strong as now with it as you were then? I got my hand up. I mean, let's just be honest. If we can get honest, then we can get back on board again. We can get back on standing on the word, not just in a few areas, but in every area of our lives. How do I call out to God? We call out or we cry out to God be, to be obedient to his word. That's what it's all about. That's what we've been known for is a name it, claim it, grab it, blab it church. Uh, there's some churches, some denominations that don't believe in that. In fact, if my brother's watching, um, <laughs> uh, their church were, would not have let us, they don't believe in that. They don't believe in Hagen and all that stuff. You know, they're very closed off to that. But uh, that's to their loss. It's not whether it is his will. We know that it is his will. Now, does it happen every time? Nope. But it is his will. 
Hallelujah. Being obedient, he said he sent his word and delivered us out of all of our destruction. He sent the word and delivered us out of all of our destruction. Do you have any destruction anywhere? Well, he said he sent the word. So find the word on the destructed thing <laughs> and put the word, pressure it. I mean, just like, just push it hard. Just push it hard. Don't play with it. You know, if you're going to do something, give it all you got. You know, that Samson did that. That's what he said. He was going to, he says, give me that strength one more time. And he brought the whole place down. And just that one more time, let me do it. Well, we need to go back in. We need to go back in and say, I'm doing it. I'm going for it. I'm not turning back. I used to sing a song, I'm not turning back. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. This is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. He leads us to change. Every time you open the word, he's going to lead you to change something. Because we haven't arrived. We need to change. I, this morning, I was in with the ladies in the, in the kitchen, and they said, said something about my hair and the dress, and then it really changed. And I said, every decade, I reinvent myself. Every decade. I got, I got, to, keep, got to keep moving. I don't want to be the 30-year-old 30, the 30 or the 40-year-old. I want to be the best 70-year-old as I'm in this decade that I can be. And that's what I endeavor to do. Is I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do. And that keeps me busy. <laughs> Amen? Keeps me very busy. Amen. Glory to God. I would encourage you to do the same thing. Just make a change. Just do something. I appreciated Nancy. She cut her hair. You know, do something. You know, it helps. Water the grass. If you've never done it before. <laughs> Verse 9 says, For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. I used to wonder about that because, you know, if you're, you're full, I get hungry every time and thirsty over again. It's not like once you drink, drink something or once you eat something, that's it. Every day I've got to go through the same process. I'm going to get up in the morning and drink some water. I'm going to have my shake. I'm going to have lunch. I'm going to have dinner. Every single day I'm doing the same thing. It may vary what time I do it, but it's, it's going to get done. When I was in Michigan, I ended up missing a few meals because of our schedule would get all messed up. But it, eventually they all got in there. You know? <laughs> it's what we do every time. So when it comes to the Word of God, it's not once you went to church, you're... Okay, I got it. It's all the time. I know this isn't the 80s. I know this isn't the 90s. But this is the year of 2017, and this is a good time to really get radical for God again. There's a whole world out there that is lost, and they are dying, and they're thirsty, and they're hungry, and they're wandering around, and we sit here with all this stuff. Yeah. We need to be busy after it, and not on Sunday night. you got Monday and Thursday and Friday, Saturday, to get busy on it. Amen? So many people like to do their, their whatever it is that they do on, on Sundays and Wednesdays. Psalms 34, 8. <laughs> We're going to move a lot. <laughs> but God is good. He is good. We say it. We say he's good all the time, and that's a really good expression. But he's really good. He's not just a story about being good. He is good. Amen. Psalms 34, verse 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So how do you do that? By applying the word to a thirsty place in your life. And when it comes to pass, you go, Mmm, that victory is so sweet. <laughs> That's better than chocolate candy bar. It's so sweet, that victory. So sweet. Amen. Are you guys excited or not? I don't Amen. know. Hallelujah. Now, I know that you've heard most of this, and some of you might be sitting in your head thinking, I've heard this before. Good. You need to hear it again and again and again and again. If we get to the place where we shut that out and we say, well, I know that, then we're already stepping back. But God loves you anyhow when you're stepping back because he loves the backslider. Way back there in the back row, I see Jerry. 
Still love you anyhow. <laughs> I mean, it used to be here, doesn't she? She didn't want her foot to be seen. I know that. I know. I, I know you. She goes like this. And when it's on the Facebook, that you see her foot going like that. So I knew that's why she moved back. <laughs> I know that little lamb. <laughs> I would move too. <laughs> Jeremiah 31, 13 says, I will satisfy the soul of the priest with abundance. I will, how many of you are satisfied? I'm not. I'm not. Mm -mm. And I'm thirsty and I'm hungry. Amen. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, he says. That's Jeremiah 31, 13. I will, I'm sorry. I will saturate the soul of the priest with abundance. Now we are kings and priests unto hymns. We are going to get saturated. We're going to move into that place that the anointing of God and the, that we can be saturated when you open up the word of God. I mean, I tell you what, I was sweating buckets up there. I'm not sweating down here, but I was sweating buckets, buckets up there. I mean, to, to be saturated, your soul, your mind, your, and it just fills your, your whole being with his presence. That's not just once in a while. If we stay thirsty and hungry, we can walk. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. <laughs> That's how saturated we'll be. Our feet will be squeaky, and they're the feet that bring good news. The gospel of peace. Yes, he's good, and he, he desires that all men come to repentance. He, does all men change their mind? Is what the repentance is just way out their word. But change your mind. And we need to have repentance services. Change our mind services. Because we get stuck in one mindset. And the word of God is here also to change our mind. To change our thinking about things. So that we can be more like Christ instead of less like Christ. But we walk in the world all the time without squeaky shoes. Without being saturated. And we're taking in the things of the world. The, the thoughts and the ideas and the mindset of what they're saying. you got to get saturated with the word, saturated, saturated with the presence of God so that we can change our mind. Say, so I'm changing my mind. I'm reinventing this mind. Amen. Okay. All right. The next point I want out, I said, now he is good. It's good and plenty, plenty good. Good and plenty, plenty good. No, but you really haven't heard that? You really missed the best part of this whole service if you don't know that song. <laughs> that was a cool song. Good and plenty, good and plenty, good and plenty, good and plenty. Plenty good. Right, Ruth? You never heard it. Do you, are you the only one? You and me? It just showed up. We're from Michigan. <laughs> I thought I had become a true Okie now because I've been here longer than I lived in Michigan but apparently not. Okay. Abundance. He's plenty. He's a God of plenty. John 10.10. 10. That one always makes me laugh because the thief comes. The thief does not come except to steal. That was his purpose. He knows his purpose and he does it well. To steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I'm come." that you might have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Not just abundantly, but more abundantly. More. Don't settle for less. When he said, I came to give you more. Spirit, soul, and body. Everything that we need has been taken care of. Everything that we desire has been taken care of. In fact, if you spend enough time with him, he gives you desires. That one time, a person says, well, uh, he gives you the desires of your heart. I said, yeah, the ones he puts in your heart. Right. It's not the desire of your flesh. You know, we have a lot of flesh ideas we get, we get and say, well, God said I can have that because that's a desire of my heart. No, you have to get the desires in your heart from him. And those are the ones we get. Right. Amen? Glory to God. And sometimes they line up with the ones you want. So, yeah. <laughs> But he says, I come to give them life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now you get to have, uh, get by life. You can get, you, yeah, you can get 
and have life, or you can, you can have plenty of life. Overflow, more than enough, because he's a God of plenty. You can have that. But it just doesn't fall on you. You've got to be a fighter. And it's a fight of faith. It's a good fight, the Bible says. It's a good fight. It's a good fight because we win. But when you're tired, when you feel weak, when you're broke, when you have bills, when you have sickness on the body, when you have trouble with, with your family, things are going wrong, when that happens, you don't feel like fighting. How many of you never felt, have felt like you didn't want to fight? Everybody has. I've been watching on Facebook, I don't know how many of you are friends with uh, the Hankins, Alicia Hankins and them. They're fighting a real battle with their son, Dylan. He's a, a twin. Uh, he's three years old, and he was just diagnosed with uh, leukemia. And I watched Facebook and how they handle what's going on. Now, I don't know what they do on, on their own time, you know, when, not on Facebook, but I know that it's a big mountain. And they say only what's going on. I watched them do that with a, a, a sister, one of the sisters of uh, uh, Trina, uh, what's her name? Patsy, Patsy, their sister, and they only would say that. We're talking about only, only. You don't have the luxury of walking around saying to everybody, this happens and this is, it's, it's you know, I don't feel here, this is what they said. You don't have the luxury of doing that. Now, we can come to each other and you say, this is what the doctor said, or this is what my checkbook looks like, whatever that is. You can say that, but you're not saying, I have, and all that. You say what you want. And sometimes we're, we're sitting here today, we have what we've been saying. We have what we've been saying. We have what, we, uh, uh, what we've been saying. And you've got to start saying something different if you want something different. And that's what I say about me. I'm stronger now than I was. And I am. So now that I've reached that, I've got to up it. You know? <coughs> it's not faith. I didn't know where, where I was holding Amen. We've got to be speaking the right things. He's the God of abundance. He was at a wedding, and he turned water into wine. You know the song. You know the story. But will he do that for you? He increased the bread and fishes and fed a whole bunch of people. Why are you worried about your finances? Why are you worried about your food? He calmed the sea when there was a storm. This is the God of plenty. He opens up the windows in heaven and gives blessings. Then he says, you'll have a hard time receiving it. You won't be able to hold on to it. That's our God. That's what he did. He's the God of abundance. He's a God of plenty. He's plenty good. Now, I want to get you to the where. That was all that to get you here. Heaven pours out blessings that we won't be, have room enough to hold. He is a plentiful God. Turn to Luke 4. All through the word, word we see examples of what he's done. And they're the stories, and we know the stories. They tell them in Bible, Sunday school, when you're kids. And that's, that can be what they are, but we have to train the kids to know these are events that took place. And he's no respecter of persons. He's the same today as he was yesterday that he will not change forever and get that solidified in their lives. And I know Sheila's doing a great job with that. Amen. So Luke 4, but it's, it's not enough just for Sheila to do that there. That has to be reinforced at home Amen. on a daily basis, not just, you know, you're with them more than Miss Sheila is. And same for us as adults. It's not what you get Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday that makes the difference is what you're doing that's going to make the biggest difference. Amen. In Luke 4, starting in verse 38, it talks about many of them were healed. It says, Then he got up and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him to help her. And standing over her, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she immediately got up and waited on them. While the sun was setting, all those who had, who had any were sick with various diseases brought them to him. 
and laying, hands, laying his hands on them, he, on each one of them, he was healing them. Demons also were coming out of many, shouting, you are the son of God. He rebuked them and he sh- would not allow them to speak because they knew who, that he was the Christ. When the day came, Jesus left and went to the, a secluded place and the crowds were searching for him and came to him and tried to keep him from going away because he was leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. Sent for this purpose. We have to know the purpose. We were in our, in our team leadership meeting, we were talking about purpose and how people needed to know the, the reason or the purpose for your finances, what God really had intended for your money, why he wants you to tithe, why he wants you to give. Yes, number one at first is for your, to supply your need so that you can glorify God because you see what he's done for you. But the second thing, or actually it's the first thing, but it, it'll be the second thing to you until you get it, is for the mission for the outreach, for reaching out to other people. And that's really what he has in mind for. It. Yes, it's to, to, you know, to get us going. It's like I tell people, I say, I didn't get saved for you. I got saved for me. I didn't accept Jesus for you. I accepted him for me. But once I did that, then I wanted to give it. I wanted to you know, find people that, so I could give them what I had. But in the beginning, it was about me. It was about my mess. It was about what I needed. And once I did that, then I had something. It's kind of like what they say in the airplane. That thing drops down, you put it on your mask, put it on you first if you've got small children with you or somebody that needs, <laughs> that can, needs help. Then you, you do you first so you can help them. So you get saved for you. You learn the word of God for you. You overcome in those areas for you. But then there reaches a time in your life when you're saying, I've got to give this to somebody else. I want to show somebody else. I want to help somebody else. So the, the purpose of your money is the same thing. Yes, it's about receiving so that you can have your needs and, and things met in your life. But its really purpose is to extend it outward. Amen? I didn't get any amens on that. So, but he's the God of abundance. So he kept on preaching in the synagogue in Judah. Then in verse five, in chapter 5 is where I'm really headed. I just wanted to prelude that. Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God... I love that sentence. It says, Now it happened while he wa- the crowd was pressing him, pressing ar- around him, and listening to the word of God. They wanted in close. They wanted to get up there to hear. Now you got to remember, he was just a man preaching, just like I'm just a woman preaching. They didn't think he was anything special. Like you don't think I'm anything special. Same thing. He, they were pressing in because they wanted to hear what he was saying. They wanted to get up close and personal to hear it. They had seen some things, and like, I'm going to get in on that, you know? And so they get up close and personal with him. He was standing by the lake at Gennesaret, and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of it, out of them and was washing their nets. And he got into one of them. He, just, he didn't even ask. He just got into one of them. And I, I asked God, I said, why? How did you know which one to pick? There was two. He got into one of them, and it was Simon Peter's. He picked Peter. There was more than just Peter there. There was two different boats. He was partners. They had their partners. But he got into Peter's boat. And he, cli- he climbed in there. And ask, oh, okay. He climbed into the one of them, which was Simon's, and asked him to push it out. They were cleaning everything up. How many of you know you go in your kitchen, you women, you go in the kitchen, you clean everything up, and then somebody goes in and messes up? You know? If you'd have ate when I had it there, you wouldn't be in here eating right now. I hate that, you know? We don't mess up the kitchen. I got it all cleaned up. That's what they had. Everything was being washed, everything was taken care of. And he got into the boat, he got into the boat, which was Simon's, and asked him to pull out a little from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. 
Now, mind you, up in verse chapter 4, they were listening to the word then. Then he left and he went to another place. He said he had to go. This is, was his purpose, was to go from place to place and to teach the word of God. So he was teaching the people from the boat. boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now we've heard many stories on this, and, I, and it is a nice story, but I don't want you to listen to it as a story. I don't want you to listen to anything other than the fact that Peter, in the next uh, verse that it says, he said, I've already cleaned everything up, it's already, but because you told me to do it, I'll do it. Obedience brings abundance, as we'll see. If you're not obedient with the, the scriptures, the word that he opens up to you, if you're not obedient with your finances, you will not have abundance. But it's not just finances. It's every single, if he tells you to stop telling bad jokes, then stop telling bad jokes. It's being obedient to whatever it is. And I don't know why I said jokes, but I, you know, okay. It's being obedient to whatever he tells you to do. The Bible also says, make out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Tre trembling. Don't try to make out somebody else's. Now, I know when they're not reading the word, you're thinking, well, how can they make, how can they make it out? They're not even, they don't go to church. They're not reading the word. You know, then just being a good example. Let yourself be that example. Let them read you. And he said, Simon answered, uh, he says, put out into the deep. And Simon answered him and said, Master, we worked all the night and caught nothing. See, they didn't think Jesus was who he was, or they surely would have said that at first was, Jesus, there's nothing out there. That's what he would there's, there's, we, we are, we're, we're there. We were cleaning up now. It's over. There's nothing there, Lord. And so he said, uh, we caught nothing, but I'll do it, as you say, and let down the nets. I'll do it. That obedience. Now, we don't talk about that so much now, but we used to preach that quite a bit about obedience, but the word of God is all about that. Obeying the word of God. He said, if you're willing and obedient, if you're willing and obedient, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. You ain't going to eat the good of the land if you're not willing and obedient to be whatever it is he's telling you to do, whatever that is. And so, so he says, nevertheless, I'm going to do it. And verse 6 says, and when, they had done, when he had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break. When they were obedient... When they did what he said to do, all of a sudden they got all these fish. And I know that had to just boop, boop, boop. I was just there in that spot and there wasn't a fish there. And so all these fish are coming into the boat. So they signaled to their partners, yo, come on, help us. And he says, the other boats, the other boat from them and come to help them. And they came and filled both of the boats where they had begun to sink. Now, that's a lot of fish. Did you ever see those boats back in that day? They were, they were big boats. They weren't like we get a, a boat, an eight-foot boat or a ten-foot boat, steel boat, flat bottom, you know. It wasn't anything like that. It was a boat. <laughs> it was a big boat like that, huge. Filled it, both of them, and they began to sink. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm, that'd be some money, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. My mother didn't just get healed from cancer. She went to the cancer doctor, and he says, there's not even evidence that you ever had it. That's a boatload. That's abundance. It's whatever area of your life, whatever he's telling you to do, do it. Just do it. Well, he's not telling me anything. Then you're not sitting down with him long enough because he's got lots to tell us. I mean, he wants... It'd take... There's no end. So we, we need to sit down and listen and then do it. Okay, over here, verse 8. But when Simon Peter saw that, he let down, he, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Can you imagine? Could see all that Jesus could do? I don't know about 
how, when you came to the Lord, but I know when I came to the Lord, I was like, oh my goodness, you are so good. I had no idea, no idea that you were that real, that you leaped off the pages, that it really happened, and then you really did go to the cross. You really did die for me. You really did do this for me if I was the only person there. That was amazing to me. And all I could do was I remember sitting, standing up in my room for hours, and I worshiped him and worshiped him. Nobody taught me. I hadn't had any teaching on it. I just had the presence of God, and it was so... The cloud was so thick in there, and I just worshipped him and worshipped him and, and cried and realized, oh my goodness, this is real. You really did walk along the Sea of Galilee, and you're inviting me into that world. You're inviting me to launch out into the deep, because see, it's in the deep things of God that you're going to really come alive. Now, I was just a baby. I didn't know all that much, but I got into that place. If you'll worship God and just let him, oh, my goodness, you'll be. You don't even have to talk. Just walk. Just walk. So poor Simon, but it was the day he got converted, actually, because it goes on to say, you know, Jesus told him, don't be afraid. From now on, instead of catching fish, you're going to catch men. And so uh, it says in verse 11, and when they brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. Now, God's not necessarily calling you to leave everything and go do that. But in essence, in, in whatever station of life that you're in, whatever you're doing, it's to leave everything. It's your own, you know, I'm always reminded of the scripture that says, uh, um, Pick up your cross and, and follow me, you know, and, and just uh, give it all. Just give it all. Don't hold back anything. That, that's your money. That's your time. You know, some people are they're more generous with their time than they are their money. The Bible doesn't say where your time is, your heart is. It says where your money is. So time is the precious commodity. Even G, the word even tells you that. That's, that's, you know, that's, mm, that's mine. I worked hard for that, you know. And, and we do. But we're not going to be left out if we will surrender it. The time, the money, the time to pray, the time to read the word. If we'll surrender it to him, we come out with the abundance. He's good. If you believe he's good, then you know you're going to get the plenty. If you'll do the things the good God tells you to do, you'll get what the good God's plenty has for you. You can't help but not get it. It's just the way it works. It's his plan. He's the master plan. He's the master artist. And you can come to church and just do your church duty, or you can actually be a Christian. Christ-like. Disciple. Or you can just particip participate in a church function by going, doing your duty and going to church. Commendable. Don't get me wrong, that's commendable. But why not go all the way with God? He said, deep calls unto deep. You have to get out there in the deep for you to hear the deep things of God. You just got to go. And then you'll come out and you'll find somebody and it may be you'll just smile at them or you'll be on the platform and just go, hey, like you do. Blesses me. I don't know about y'all, but it blesses me. I mean, to be excited about Jesus. So, well, I don't have to do that to be excited. No, you don't have to do it. You're right. You don't have to. Something happens with, well, you can cry. Sometimes you cry. You get overloaded. I mean, we, we saw what happened to Simon. He just, uh, oh, I'm just a wretched old sinner. You know, he knew that he, you know, was like, it wasn't that he was necessary. Well, he was doubting. He was doubting, and so when he saw that what Jesus could do for him, he had heard others, but he saw what he did for him. And we need to stand up, push through some of these places that we've been lapsed in. I've had some that I've had to get back up and say, all right, we're going again. I'm going in there. You know, I'm not going to let you keep me out of the abundance, out of the blessing. I didn't come this far to turn back now. How about you? Put too much in it, too much time, push it all the way through. Amen. Amen? Stand on your feet, and I'm going to give you an opportunity tonight to uh, 
uh, make change. <laughs> I don't want to use the word repent, but, uh, <laughs> but change. The word of God is supposed to change us, make us different than when we walk through the doors. Every time we walk through these, these doors or every time you open the word, it should change us. Something should happen to us that's good, that's more like God than not. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Thank you that it just never gets old and it never runs out, but it's always there for us. It always causes us to triumph. It always makes us hunger and thirst for more because we just can't get enough of you. And I thank you tonight, Father, as your word has been thrown out into the, into the field, Father. You said it would produce in their lives. And I've asked you to do that for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that each one is examining their own life, their own heart, and seeing if there has something maybe that they've kind of just left way by the wayside and just kind of ignored it. I know I had my own few things that I had put by the wayside, and, and I've picked them up, and I've, I've made you the promise that I'm going to get back in them. And I just, I know, Father, that you've, you're talking to each one of your, your people tonight. So if you're here tonight, and you've found your, you find yourself in that place that I did, that there's some things I've just laid over to the side, I want you to come, and I'm going to pray with you. And uh, I believe that you'll get the... The juice and the squishies and the presence of God to be able to pick that up and, and, and push through again, push through again, go stronger and stronger. Amen. You know, there is no <clears throat> age in God. There's no male or female. There's no age. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody, stretch your hands out towards these people that have come tonight that they want change, they want change, they want change in Jesus' name. Change it in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Change in Jesus' name, change in Jesus' name. Oh, basika dorobre dele masaha da 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 da. That means you gotta yield. Sometimes it's just things that are, sometimes it's just our mouth. <laughs> Work on that one. Change and change. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Just lift your hands up to heaven. Hallelujah. Say, Jesus. You. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Say, Jesus. 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 <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Father, you know. Change in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, don't tell him you're going to do it and not do it. <laughs> That's not fun. Then it is repentance. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Pick him back up. Pick him back up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now, we're going to pray for Samantha tonight. Um, the doctors told her that the, the fluid that the baby's in is running low. And it needs to come up. And uh, because it could be cause the baby to come early, three weeks. Well, it's not even due until September. So we want Matt to stay right where he's at, okay? In the name of Jesus, we are all agreeing tonight for that fluid to come up in her body. And he will not come early. He will stay right there until he's done. In Jesus' name, for your word says that they, she would not. She would not bring forth the fruit until it's season, until it's time. So I thank you, Father, that he stays right there. And I ask you to give Samantha peace now, your peace that passes understanding, Father, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, that she doesn't worry about this little boy inside of her, Father, that you've got, him, you've got his future in your hands, Father. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please. 
Anyhow, we're having a shower pretty soon, so you guys <laughs> <laughs> These people that want to have babies before we have the shower, I don't know. <laughs> me, me, me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, change, change, change. And Father, you know, you know how to speak to each person, Father, and make it clear in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> you always need change. <laughs> it's work in progress. <laughs> this is our work in progress. Here. Yes. <laughs> we all are. Thank you, Lord. He's still working on me. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Direction. The direction. The direction. And and, and it make it clear, uh, and then they need to agree together. Hallelujah. I don't know what that is, but okay. So get it and then agree with, with Amy. Exactly. <laughs> okay. In the name of Jesus now, Father, give him peace and joy in abundance. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> Mm, saturate his life. Been faithful, mm -hmm. obedient, and you're the rewarder, Father. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. All hearts clear? All right. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, that it is a strength builder for us tonight. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. You can stay there, Miss Sally. <laughs> Don't feel pressure to get up. <laughs>